All right, everybody, welcome back to Candy Bar Creep Show. Welcome to the Easter Evils episode, where we're going to celebrate all things Easter horror. The episode probably won't be too long, because there's not that much ground to cover when it comes to Easter horror, and the fact that I have a new baby at home is going to make things go a lot uh, faster today, I think. But anyways, let's dive into this very special episode of Candy Bar Creep Show. I was thinking about doing a St. Patrick's Day Leprechaun episode a few weeks back because St. Patrick's Day and Easter fell in the same month this year, March. But uh, since uh, Christian and I covered the Leprechaun franchise at large on our most recent or second to last most recent Planet Dirty episode where we ranked the Leprechaun franchise overall, I decided just to save it for Easter Evils. So with all that said, welcome to Easter Evils. <laughs> So I have a question for you. What exactly is Easter horror? Easter horror could be interpreted as a fictional or thematic concept that blends the traditional joyful celebration of Easter, a holiday associated with rebirth, spring, and in Christian tradition, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, with elements of horror, a genre known for its ability to provoke fear, suspense, and a deep sense of unease. The juxtaposition of these two vastly different themes creates a unique and eerie narrative space. But let's talk about some very specific Easter horror movies, starting with the Bunny Man Trilogy. This trio of slasher films carved a niche within the horror genre with its bizarre yet terrifying antagonist, a murderous psychopath donning a bunny suit. Directed, written, and produced by Carl Lindbergh, the series began with Bunny Man in 2011, followed by sequels Bunny Man 2 in 2014 and Bunny Man Vengeance concluding the saga in 2017. The initial Bunny Man film introduces viewers to a macabre world where a group of friends encounters a menacing figure in a rabbit costume who terrorizes and hunts them down with relentless savagery. The movie opens with chilling scenes that set the tone for a relentless chase and survival struggle against the Bunny Man's deranged violence. The cast including Cheryl Texeria, Matthew Albrecht, and Elena Gianchi, find themselves in a desperate bid for survival against a backdrop of gore and terror, culminating in a twisted finale that leaves the audience unsettled by the sheer brutality displayed. Critics have had mixed reactions to the Bunny Man series, with some reviews highlighting the film's ability to disturb and entertain horror fans, while others criticize the trilogy for its lack of depth, character development, and coherence. Despite this criticism, including being labeled as idiotic and or the worst films in years by some, the Bunny Man films have garnered a cult following. Admirers of the trilogy appreciate its unique villain, the gritty low-budget feel reminiscent of classic horror films, and the sheer absurdity of a bunny-suited murderer which, in a twisted way, adds to its charm. Bunny Man 2, also known as the Bunny Man Resurrection in the UK, continues the dark adventures of the bunny-suited killer, incorporating a family dynamic into the psychopath's murderous escapades. By the time Bunny Van Vengeance rolls around, audiences are well acquainted with the eerie and blood-soaked universe Lindbergh has crafted, expecting the trilogy to conclude with the same fervor it began with. The Bunny Man trilogy is a testament to the horror genre's capacity for innovation and its ability to entertain and horrify audiences with unconventional antagonists. Despite varied critical reception, Carl Lindbergh's creation stands as a memorable foray into Easter-themed horror, presenting a story that's as bizarre as it is chilling. Now, before we move on to other Easter horror movies, and my very own Easter horror movie at that, I think we need to first move on to another Easter topic, 
albeit one that is equally as important, if not more important, than the topic of Easter horror movies in general. And that is Easter candy. And specifically, what holiday has the better candy overall? Halloween? Christmas? Or Easter? Let's talk about it. As we embark on a sugary journey through the calendar's festive landmarks, we find ourselves entangled in a sweet debate that has long divided enthusiasts and connoisseurs alike. Which holiday boasts the best seasonal candy? Each holiday, with its distinctive flavors and traditions, presents a strong case, but a thorough exploration reveals a subtle hierarchy within this candy-laden landscape. Easter emerges as a strong contender with its vibrant array of candies that symbolize renewal and joy. The shelves bloom with pastel hues, housing the likes of Cadbury cream eggs and jelly beans, each bursting with flavor. The holiday is synonymous with chocolate bunnies and egg-shaped delights, offering not just a feast for the taste buds, but also for the eyes. Easter candy, with its playful shapes and myriad textures, from the creamy decadence of chocolate to the sugary squish of marshmallow peeps, almost captures the crown with its innovative approach to holiday sweets. But transitioning from spring's pastel palette, Christmas steps in with its traditional confections that warm the heart amidst winter's chill. With peppermint candy canes and rich chocolate coins, Christmas candy is steeped in nostalgia, evoking memories of yesteryear with each minty twist or chocolatey bite. However, while these treats are integral to the season's festivities, they seem to tread a familiar path, lacking the diversity and whimsy that mark the offerings of other holidays. The spirit of Christmas candy, bound by tradition, doesn't quite match the inventive and varied selection that define some of its competitors. Yet, as we cast our gaze upon Halloween, the holiday's claim to the candy throne becomes evident. Halloween and candy share an intrinsic bond, celebrated through the ritual of trick-or-treating, which brings communities together in a night of whimsical indulgence. The variety of Halloween candy is also unparalleled, encompassing everything from miniature chocolate bars to strangely shaped gummies that delight both the young and the young at heart. Halloween doesn't just offer candy, it celebrates it, making sweets an integral part of its identity. This holiday captures the essence of joy and discovery, traits that are essential to the candy experience. The emotional resonance of sifting through a Halloween haul, coupled with the sheer breadth of its candy selection, places Halloween at the pinnacle of the holiday candy hierarchy. Therefore, upon reflection, it becomes clear that while Easter commendably secures its position as a close runner-up, with its colorful and creative offerings, and Christmas, though cherished, trails with its comforting yet predictable selection, it is Halloween that stands unrivaled. The culmination of variety, emotional connection, and the celebration of indulgence propels Halloween to the forefront, crowning it the ultimate holiday for candy connoisseurs. In the grand debate of holiday candies, it is Halloween that reigns supreme, capturing the hearts and taste buds of all who partake in its sweet, spooky splendor. All right, well, with the candy discussion now behind us, let's refocus our focus, back onto Easter horror. But before we dive into another list, I would like to talk about my own Easter horror movie for a second. My 2017 Easter slasher love story slash American psycho homage, a little movie called Cottontail. Let's dive in. Jumping into the making of Cottontail was like strapping into a roller coaster blindfolded. You know it's going to be wild, but you've got no clue which way you're about to turn. This wasn't just another notch in the Luniverse belt. Nope, this was me throwing down the gauntlet, mixing up a horror slasher with a side of romance, all while trying to channel some of the American Psycho vibes. Sounds crazy, right? That's because it absolutely was. 
Working on this film was like hanging out in a creative madhouse, where everyone's ideas bounced off the walls. Shanna Ammons, my rock and soon-to-be wife, stepped into Detective Lisa Graham's shoes and knocked it out of the park, giving the character a backbone of steel wrapped in layers of complexity. Eric Wicks, not just my attorney and go-to guy for legal advice, but a solid friend as well, brought Detective William Rhodes to life with a kind of gravitas that you just can't teach. Austin Rogelia was the guy behind the mask, our very own Cottontail, but his talent didn't stop at just creeping us out on screen. He doubled as my partner in crime behind the camera as well, helping to shape the look and feel of this wild ride called Cottontail. His other half, Sarah Rogelia, brought Carmela into the mix, weaving this unexpected electric romance that gave our slasher flick its heartbeat. The gang was all here as well, with Luniverse regulars like Jake Estrada, Tanner Kim, Stephen Huey, and Patrick Hearn jumping into the fray, each bringing something fresh to the table. And let's not forget about the Boo Brothers either, with yours truly stepping back into those shoes with Bill Butler and Brant Wolfram was a blast from the past that never gets old, adding a bit of fun amidst the mayhem. Piecing Cottontail together over two to three months was a wild ride from start to finish. We were running on adrenaline, creativity, and let's be honest, probably too much caffeine. When we dropped the movie just in time for Easter 2017, it was like sending our baby out into the world, followed by an extended cut of the film a year later in 2018 that let us dive even deeper into this crazy story we put together. Looking back, Cottontail is a reminder of what happens when you throw caution to the wind and just go for it, fueled by a bunch of friends who are just as crazy about making movies as I am. It's about the thrill of the creative process, the chaos, and the sheer joy of bringing a wild idea to life. Now, thinking about what's next for the Luniverse and possibly revisiting Cottontail down the road gets me pumped. But hey, there's a whole universe of stories out there waiting to be told, and who knows where we'll head next. I guess probably Loon the final chapter. I really need to get on that. But here's the deal. If you haven't checked out Cottontail yet, what are you waiting for? This movie is a piece of my heart, a testament to what we can do when we all pull together to make something truly out there. Hit up the link in the video description after this podcast episode wraps up and give the movie a watch. It's a dive into the kind of movie-making chaos that makes life exciting as a filmmaker. Trust me you won't regret it. Or you might. I don't know. Just click the link. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the remainder of the Easter horror movies I wanted to cover in this episode. So with that said, be sure to drop a comment below and let me know which of these movies you've actually seen. So let's dive in. All right, if you're in for a wild, chilling ride this Easter, I've stumbled upon a list of horror movies that's as bizarre as it is blood-curdling. First off, we've got The Night Before Easter from 2014, where a night in a storage facility turns into a nightmare thanks to an axe-wielding maniac dressed as the Easter Bunny. Then, there's Beaster Day, Here Comes Peter Cottonhell, a tale of a monstrous Easter bunny wreaking havoc on a town, with only a wannabe actress and a dog catcher standing in its way. Easter Sunday, also from 2014, revives a long-dead serial killer for a night of terror, while Easter Bunny Bloodbath takes us back to a traumatic Easter morning from 20 years ago, revisited with dire consequences. Easter Bunny Kill Kill flips the script, with a vengeful bunny targeting the tormentors of a disabled teenager. Not weird enough yet? Cottontail sees genetic experiments gone awry when a test rabbit's altered genes lead to unexpected terror. Peter Rottentail mixes magic, tragedy, and revenge into a horrific cocktail. Serial Rabbit introduces a killer bunny hunting down the spiritually unaware during Easter in Texas, and it even has an array of its own sequels. 
And for a bit of a throwback, Night of the Lepus, 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 I don't know, but it's from 1972 and brings a giant mutant rabbit army into the mix. Bunny the Killer Thing, a Finnish-British horror comedy, throws us into a cabin nightmare with a half-human, half-rabbit creature. Lastly, Feaster Sunday adds a dose of drama to the horror with a passion play gone terribly wrong amidst love triangles and mysterious threats. It's a collection that spans from campy to creepy, with every shade of horror in between. Perfect for an unconventional Easter movie marathon, wouldn't you say? And believe it or not, this is just the tip of the iceberg. The world of Easter-themed horror is far more vast and varied than you might imagine. Beyond the chilling tales of bunny-suited maniacs and mutant rabbits that I've shared here, there exists a warrant of other spine-tingling films, each with their own unique twists on what should be a tearful holiday. From underground cult classics to indie gems waiting to be discovered, such as yours truly's Cottontail, the genre spans an array of stories that delve into the macabre, the bizarre, and the downright terrifying. The creativity and twisted humor filmmakers bring to this niche are boundless, turning the Easter holiday into a backdrop of terror, revenge, and supernatural occurrences that defy expectations. With each movie, the boundary of horror is pushed further, inviting enthusiasts and the curious alike to explore the depths of this peculiar subgenre. Whether it's through the eyes of a vengeful magician, a genetic experiment gone awry, or a creature feature that turns festive traditions on their head, there's always more to discover with Easter horror. So, if you've got a taste for the unconventional, or are looking to spice up your Easter holiday viewing with something outside the typical Easter fare, know that the rabbit hole of Easter horror movies runs deep. There's a whole other world of eerie, egg-centric tales out there, each waiting to be discovered and add an unforgettable twist to your holiday tradition. Dive in, and who knows what twisted tales you'll uncover. Well, that was pretty much the meat and potatoes of this very short Candy Bar Creep Show Easter Evils episode. Again, we just had a baby. Baby Mia is home. She is sleeping. Things are good. Shanna's fine. She's cut open because she had a C-section, but she's fine. Isabella is loving her brand new baby sister. Uh, all is well, I should say. All is well. I couldn't be happier. Uh, the only thing else I could ask for is a couple million dollars in the bank. But other than that, things are good. Easter is great. I'm going to go watch Steel Magnolias about 57 times because that's the best Easter movie on the planet. I was going to cover Steel Magnolias here on the episode, but I figured I'd just leave it short and sweet. Everybody wants to get back to their chocolate eggs and their Easter egg hunts and all that jazz, family time, going to church, whatever you guys do for Easter, go and do it. I will spend next year on Tabata Vision TV, if the channel's still around, doing a huge, huge video essay about Steel Magnolias and why it is the perfect non-horror Easter movie and why you should love it and why you should watch Steel Magnolias 1989 every single Easter Sunday. And on that note... I'll catch you guys later. <laughs> Why is this so weird? Why is this so awesome? It's a real one. The eye holes are... are here. <laughs> Why not? This just don't make sense. Yeah, no. Alright guys, let's get you lined up. Uh, who am I killing again? You? Yep. Any enforcer? The same thing for you actually. You're gonna be doing the same buddy? thing. You're gonna be running uh, chasing them. Chasing, chasing the humans. Yeah, I think it'd be funny as hell if you're behind the whole group chasing everybody. You know what I mean? In this shot? Yeah. Okay, so I'm not going to do B-roll. Be, be into each other. I want it to be as chaotic as and possible. <laughs> Dude, I've been sitting down since fucking Thursday. Steven. And now you want me to run? Brandon, are we sprinting? You guys are going to do whatever you feel Just natural. Run around, run around and take a picture.
Hey, for how far? You want us to just run laps and you get us every time we come by? I'm running no fuck lap. <laughs> I'm too fat for all of this. We can make this into some pretty good some middle school track. <laughs> In three, two, one, action! I thought we were supposed to wait three seconds before what he said, action. What the fuck is that? All right, that was good. Another time. Let's do it again. Okay, so look forward. Put down the camera seat. Now come to the fun part. Cock your head a little bit. That was the good fun part. Now run. Because <laughs> I can't see your hands, so I just want to make sure you're still moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So move away, move the camera. Say so your line and then cock the gun and run. Action. Now comes the fun part. Good, good, good. Blow up a library, anonymous. <laughs> Steve, I'm sorry, get back to the You, you, you post that, and some Hillary supporter is going to make it. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> that was perfect. That was perfect. That was perfect. Hey, Steven, I need you to have hey, you. Girl, you, you look scary. Scared. <laughs> like, scary or scared? scared? You look scared. Okay. Determined. You have to be like, like, like fucking. Right. Like you're gonna That was good. That was good. That was awesome. That's it. Very good. That was... Okay, in three, two, one. Action! Oh. <laughs> Ready? In three, two, one. Action! Vote, yes! Oh. <laughs> okay, I got my target spot. I got a hickey. I want to make sure your hands are going I didn't see nothing. So hit him in the neck. In the, in the... Yeah, you hit me in the spot. Ready, Steven? Oh! oh. I took my ear off! <laughs> Two. Whenever you're ready, we're rolling. <laughs> oh, it looked cool, but it didn't fucking work! One, two, three. That was pretty cool. Did it bust? Did it bust? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you are. Oh! What the fuck with ball? You guys just it spit it at Brandon. It that was good though, Steven. That was really good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, Shannon, throw it. Steven, do it. How bad? And that's it. How does he get it on the back of this arm over here? When he spit it, the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> Do, oh, we need to sprinkle glitter on his face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. However, if you want to see the big daddy, check this out. 24 to 105. Dude, this is a sick fucking lens. 120 bucks, man. Go to Best Buy and get one. What? Is somebody need to go in the pool? Jeremy, what's happening? Nothing. Just make sure he has a towel when he comes out. It's been great. <laughs> I've got the clap and I'm giving it to you. Audio life. <laughs> He's touching my fuzzy mic. <laughs> hey, once he's hung out with this crowd yeah. for any length like, That uh, face could be sad, happy, angry, anything. That's like whatever you put onto it, it's like it is. I'm not going to happen whenever I get there. He's going to have to keep up if he's going to hang out with this crowd. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. But you can rename chairs. the ones that aren't already named, like Danny. I think the, like, the first one's Shanna's, strange. the second one's mine, the third one is Tammy's. Um, and then after that, I'm not Jeremy, sure. Jeremy, make sure the masks that are already chosen are in the pile. Known. Jerry, stand uh, right here by this 2x4. Uh, well, I'm going to flip 2x4. That's Shanna. This is me. That's Danny. That's, that's Tammy. Tammy. That's Tammy. That's not selected. That's Danny right here. This is Danny. Okay. That's Logan. That's two there. Jeremy, I want you to stand like right here. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> That's where he's gonna be. All right, hold on. Filming a fucking Easter movie in Christmas time. You can move around. The middle, dude, like it, it's so tight on my face. It's so weird. I have some pockets. I don't know. I think it'll be in the shot though. What? The light. <laughs> Oh god damn it. Well we can I can't tell with everybody in in, in <laughs> Alright guys, come back again. I'm sorry. Come back real quick. This way. <laughs> it was me in the background with this mask on. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, it's some kind of PDS All right, I've got record. I need to clap from you. I'll clap. <laughs> are we recording? You, you keep we giving me shit to put in the credits, Jeremy. I swear to God. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I'm playing. You're sitting in the theater. Wait, you're, you can't see that. You're gonna regret those actions. Wait, wait, let me see that that thing. Ready? Act. Okay. Oh. That is enough of that, dudes. Let's go. Oh man, that's yeah. definitely going in there. Oh my god. Okay. Put, the mask. Put your mask on. That'll be the opening credit sequence. It's just like slow motion. Be <laughs> taller, but he would be like right there. Brandon, come look. Yeah. Jeremy, how'd you know to do the yeah, yeah, other shot? Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> so, the Jake, hold the gun up to your chest level. Okay. Action! Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, that was really fast. <laughs> and so first, Jake's gonna come in and he's gonna walk past really quickly. And then you're gonna come in slowly from right here and you're gonna kind of stop and stand and look at him. He's gonna look back at me. So Gary, turn your head towards me a little bit as far as you can, yeah. Okay, and I'm gonna readjust the shot just a hair. He's was right. Okay. It's fucking fun as shit. Pit stains or something. Oh, yes. Oh Pit my stains. god. Poor and, Jeremy. And nipples too, a little bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what is he, lactating? He's got a belly button. <laughs> it happens. No, I wasn't there when you filmed it, but I saw the script. Right. This is something like that. All right, let's have you take a step forward. I want to get light on. We need a jail. We need a jail. Good luck, sir. You have to rent that place, like this always. Green screen. Yeah. You guys are really close to not. You guys are not close enough together. I I don't think I have enough room to back up to get a close up of all three of you. I mean, what kind of a man treats his woman like that? And cut. Beautiful. That's uh, it. What is that? I was like, Do I have a life? <laughs> what is that question like? Well, she's a dude, so. Is that Where's the Titusville of the State Farm? That's from the Jake from State Farm commercial. That guy's in Titusville? It says, yeah. it says Jake from State Farm. He's in Titusville? Yeah. Will he be in a movie? Well, <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, it only happened that last time for some reason. I think he should just have a cameo where, where like in the club scene, he's there. Like and he's like, and he comes up to you, he's like, I don't know, man. You're like, shut up, Jake. Hey, Jeremy, let me know when you're ready. What line were you at? Were you guys at when they closed the gate? Jeremy, you gotta stop if it's bad. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I love you. Where's your owner? Do not get caught in the hot in the go. Go back, go back. Go back. Oh, yeah. Can we roll yeah, yeah, don't, don't, do, don't, it's, do, it's, don't right my it's like night at the Roxbury. Listen, don't. <laughs> Tell me to roll, Jerry. I'm rolling. I'm gonna clap for you. I'm not gonna clap for you. 
Yeah. You got that? I got it, bro. Got it. She's right. I'm not giving her any time to put in a line. It's like, it's, it's like, fuck, gotta go. And she's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> that looks like a rap video. How much do you know about the books of power? And cut. I feel like mine was cheesy as hell. No, it wasn't. It was not. I felt like it was cheesy as hell. Can you hear that? Like... It's supposed to be cheesy. You're a fucking chocolate bunny in a gold foil. <laughs> God damn it. In a NASA shirt. In a witch <laughs> house. In a Jumanji box over there. Who am I? Ooh, that was actually pretty natural. Let's do that one more time. That was natural. Hated it! No, I love it. <laughs> A real man doesn't tweet his queen. Tweet. Doesn't tweet his queen. Yes, okay, let's try that. I thought you said the I taught tweet I taught pretty tat. <laughs> Remember, I'm a tat. It's not even open. <laughs> See, I twist it a little bit. Ooh, this looks fucked up. <laughs> okay, Danny, blood. More blood, more blood. Action. Start over, stop, 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 stop. Start over. In the sunlight. I know. I'm sorry, Pat. I saw like some hands come in and do. Hey, so you guys take. I am your father. No! No? Yes. Okay. You hunter back. Oh, yeah. See? Oh, good call. Action! <laughs> Action. So Eric, what's happening? Just got the mic here for the earpiece like we did the last time. Oh, at nice. Carmel's house. Jeremy, what's happening? I am rigging his car for sound right now. Jump! God damn it! <laughs> I can't do that. Okay, that's recording. Oh, um, he was with the uh, Boom Boom Brothers and uh, <laughs> Wait, what? The Boom Brothers. Oh, the, the Boom, Boom Brothers. Brothers. <laughs> I think she comes. She came. You came yeah, you, you came a little too far. Yeah. You went out of frame first yeah. when you came. All right. Bill, you took her out of focus again. She like 